Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Coop de Villa channel. I'm Scott Cooper, and we are back to talk about Aston Villa's home match against Crystal Palace. Um, it was a big, big afternoon for Aston Villa, the 40th anniversary of Rotterdam and the European Cup win against Bayern Munich. They had all the ex-players there. It was a great, great afternoon. The game, not so good, but we'll get into that and all more after this. Okay, so yes, we were at Villa Park and uh, it was a mid-table clash, nothing to really play for for both teams, uh, but got Noah here to talk about it and um, yeah, Noah, um, it really felt like one of those sort of end of season games where no one had much to play for, a bit of a ball fest and I think Villa really sort of missed a trick to sort of, uh, you know, put, put down a marker. 100%. It was an absolute snooze fest uh, for me. One of the best kickoff times Mel would have had for a while, an 11 p.m. kickoff, and it was an absolute snooze fest. The first half especially. I mean, we had some some big chances. Danny Ings with both of them falling at his feet. Yep. Unfortunately, I think earlier on in the season, he's probably scoring both of those, but I think both teams on the beach. I don't like Wilfred Zaha anymore after that game. He's uh, a bit of a, a bit of a weird unit sometimes. Yeah, um, Wilfred... Wilfred uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he loves to complain. He oh. loves to, like honestly, if that was in the AFL here, you're getting a lot of free kicks against you for dissent against the umpires. But you know, he does what he wants, thinks he runs the place. He's no longer the player he used to be. No one really wants to sign him, no. in my opinion, anyway. Um, but you know, one all draw, as you said, end of season game. I'm happy Ollie found the back of the net. Honestly, I didn't think it came off him, like watching it live, it was an own mm. goal. But then the replay showed it came through the defender's leg, and Ollie did get a bit on it. So yeah, he's up to 11 goals now this season. Yeah, I'm really happy for him. No, it was, it was great to see him get on the score sheet. And at, at that point, I was thinking, wow, we're actually going to win this game. Um, I really thought, like, the first half was really poor, apart from the Danny Ings chances. And, yeah, I just I, – I was really disappointed because, you know, we had the, uh, the 40-year anniversary. You know, we had this big celebration at Villa Park. And, it looked uh, good. It did yeah, look so good. It was, it was great. And I, I just really think the, the players sort of um, let themselves down, let the sort of club down. It felt it, – it, it really – we had no urgency. No, nah, none at all. No confidence in each other. Um, we couldn't string three passes together. And, um, yeah, it, it really just looked so lackluster and – you know, Coutinho, after signing the deal, I was expecting a big game from him. That didn't really happen. The only sort of players that really, you know, I think can hold their head up high was uh, Luke Digne. Um, again, I think, you know, toiled hard and did did his usual thing. And uh, Buendia, when he came off the bench, looked, you know, he looked bright as he always does. And that just goes back to the question, why isn't, why isn't he starting games for us? Yeah, I don't know. I think CVG's trying to get the Watkins Ings to work like more often. And to be fair, it has been working. We can't say it hasn't been working because it has, in, like yeah. in my opinion. It's just hard. I think it's either you play two tens and play Coutinho and Buendia both as a 10, but that means McGinn's too deep, in my opinion. So mm. I think what he's doing is he's just got to go to his strongest team. And I would say put Coutinho out on left, but then you got to drop one of you know, Watkins and Ings. It's one of the, it's a hard, it's, it's a hard job. I'd hate to be a manager. It's hard to please everyone. Um, yeah. Obviously, Buendia wouldn't be happy with coming off the bench every time because he, he provides a spark. Like, he's very, very good. Like, those chances late in the game are coming off the back of, of him carrying up the ball and, and JJ as well, actually, I might say. Yes. He had a very good impact when he came on. Um, but our goal really came from nothing. Like, just a, a lucky ball in. Like, we didn't really create many clear-cut chances from, like, the the 45th to, like, 90th minute, in my opinion. Like, in the second half, there was no, like, real, like, clear-cut mm. chances for us. And no, one of those no. days... And listening to Gerard after the match, he said that we he thought we deserved to win the match, and um, he he said that you know we were creating chances, which is good, but we're just not taking them. And I I, I disagree. I think that um, like you said, the 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 goal came from you know a bit of a just a you know good a, ball. A, a good, good ball, ball from ball, Dinier, yeah, a, a good ball, but a, a sort of a hopeful ball, and a, and a lot of 
a lot of what we do seems to be hopeful balls and just hopeless balls, really. Like it's um like Mings and Konza again, um, very disappointing. Nakamba gave the ball away pretty much Too every often. time he had it. Yeah. Um, I think he did all right. Like he won some crucial balls, but that one that he played back to Chambers, I couldn't believe my eyes. Like mm. in a game like we were playing, like we weren't playing very well and it's almost gift them the lead. It, it hurt. Yeah, and the defending off the equaliser as well was really schoolboy uh, errors. The, you know, first of all, to give the free kick away in that position was was poor. And then you have Mings kind of not really clear, clearing his lines. The ball comes back in and, you know, it's it's a lobbed ball into the area. Um, yeah. And somehow they, they get the first ball and the second ball and um, Schlupp scores. Uh, it was... Um, I mean, it, I've seen us play worse. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so have I. But I just really felt that, you know, with the good news in the week of signing Coutinho, the fact that we'd won two in a row, the 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 big celebration before the game and everything, I just really expected a, a, a performance. And against a team that are on the beach like, like we are in terms of got nothing to play for, can't really go up to European football, won't get relegated, um... I was really expecting us to come out and win the game easily and at least put in a, a you know a full sort of ninety minute performance. Um, and yeah, for that first sort of half especially, and and you know long periods of second half too, we we just looked really poor. Um, and yeah, I think Gerard, you know, is going to have to fix this going to next year. No, he has to, but I think. You have a full preseason. He signs the players he wants. He'll offload the dead wood, which we all know will be coming. Um, yeah, yeah, he's going to swing the axe. He, he needs to get the team he wants. You know, it took. You know, obviously, Dean Smith got us promoted in the championship, but he got that done with a Steve Bruce team. He yeah. didn't really get to put his mark on the team until the summer. And I'm actually really excited to see to see what he does. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a lot of players that won't be playing in a Villa shirt again. Mm. Um, you know, we can name probably five Villa quickly. Like I'll start with Morgan Sands. So I think his his Villa career yep. is done. Bertrand Traore, El Ghazi yeah. won't be coming back. Trezier won't be coming back. You know, there's heaps of players you can name that just won't be playing again. So, yeah, big changes. I think once he gets that full preseason under his belt, we'll see a different Villa. Obviously, both teams on the beach. Mm. I know we have one big game coming up, which we hopefully have a, a big say in, in what happens in the last game of the season. But, yeah, yeah, I think we're on the beach and it's going to be a pretty cruisy end of the season, I think. Yeah, well... Like you said, um, there's plenty to play for for the teams we're up against. Burnley on Thursday night um, is the first one. They are they going to be desperate? I mean, they you know we played them a, you know a week or so ago, and um, you know they were they were really poor that day. We were good, and we uh, won the game nice and early. So, but um, you know I watched them against Spurs last night, and um, you know they they were a bit unlucky to lose that match, and. Um, if they come with that sort of performance again, um, I could think, do it. Yeah, I think they might get something out of that yeah. game. Um, just because, like you said, we don't have a lot to play for. But um, I would hope to see a bit of a reaction from this performance. Um, the midfield, especially, uh, was quite poor. I mean, McGinn was all right, pretty good, but even look- Dougie, like he, like you take him back to two games ago against Burnley, he was like doing so well in that game mm. you know doing so even against Liverpool really Liverpool, really good yeah you know and then it's just like a different it was just trotting around the pitch not really given too much it's like it's that's yeah. why he has so much potential but then he like he doesn't just keep going that next that uh, extra step like if he did it week in week out you know he'd be by far like an absolute gun and teams would be chasing him but McGinn was the only one I think in the midfield can hold his yeah. head up, uh, held high, like the t- that started anyway. Because I think yeah. JJ and and Wendia were were brilliant. That's it, and um, you know, like it was great to see the uh, the the class of eighty two all there um, with the cup, uh, the big TFO in front of the whole ten, all all the flags that all the uh, fans had um, was good too. I mean, I, I saw a lot of people uh, like from other clubs online, sort of having a bit of a go at Villa for that, saying that it was a bit um, tin pot type. Yeah, well, if they, if they if all those clubs can win a Champions League, they can celebrate like it as well. I mean, just because they haven't won one doesn't mean they can say yeah, our celebration is crap. Exactly. Yeah, and, so. um, you know, you've got to, you've got to, uh, you've got to celebrate these, these anniversaries. It's a, yeah. 
it's the biggest day in the club's history. And, um, you know, these, if we're going to sort of move forward under Gerard, you know, that's, you know, that's the kind of winning mentality and the sort of team spirit from that team that we, we need to sort of, you know, get. And, um, yeah, I think Steven Gerrard, you know, he needs to he needs to look at the sort of characters he's got in the team, you know, um, the leadership of the likes of Mings and um, even even like Emmy Martinez in some this season it hasn't really been where it was nah, last year. Hundred uh, percent. Uh, I know McGinn, you know, he he's a goer. He'll 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 give it one hundred and ten percent every week. Um, and Ollie Watkins has improved as the season's gone on and he's another sort of leader in the team. But yeah, we do sort of, when, you know, I can I can very often tell in the first five minutes how we're going to play, you know. Yeah, it's very clear to see, isn't it? And it's very clear to see. It normally starts the, with the ball going back to Tyron Mings and he takes a couple of touches and just doesn't know what to do with it. Like, and he ends up just kicking it out or, you know, I think a couple of times um, against Palace, he he lost it. He you know cleared it into his own player and that sort of thing. And um, yeah, so that that first that first initial sort of twenty minutes, um, even though we created the chances from Danny Ings, it 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 became pretty clear that we weren't really on it. And um, yeah, that's disappointing to see. Yeah, uh, yeah, I. I was I was pretty disgusted actually with the whole sort of situation with the whole celebration going on. I, I expected a lot more, and um, yeah, I, th- I hope the players you know have a good sort of hard look at themselves, and you know I hope you know they can look at guys like Derek Mortimer and Cowens and these guys that you know actually won silverware for us and the biggest prize in the game, um, and you know realize that if they want to go anywhere near that. Um, you know that they've got to take a leaf out of their book and and really sort of buy into the club's sort of motto, the family atmosphere, the sort of team spirit, and um, yeah, we're going to have to improve a Massively. great deal, a great deal next season. Yeah, hundred percent. But I, I I think next season we'll have a new captain. I don't think, as much as I love Tyrone Mings, I think that Jared will put his own stamp on the team. He said yeah. Tyrone Mings be the captain for the rest of the season, but. I don't see him being the captain next year. Like, I think, you know, it's pretty hard for him. He got given the captaincy after our boyhood fan and, you know, love child left, which mm-hmm. still hurts. Um, You know, so I think we'll have a new captain. I think, honestly, Tyrone Mings' best is, like, up there with anyone. Mm-hmm. But he's just so inconsistent. Like, I love Tyrone. I loved when he was on loan from Bournemouth. I love him every season. But he's just got to get that consistency right. Same, like, look at Consa. Mm-hmm. You know, he was, a, as I said last podcast, he was a Rolls-Royce Center back yep. last podcast uh, last year. Yep. Um, unfortunately, I think his season's done with a knee injury, which is a big opportunity for Chambers to to come in, or even Courtney Horse. I know he'll pick Chambers, but you know, Courtney Horse has been out the squad for God knows how long. So a bit of a chance for him. But it's yeah. just the consistency in players, you know, like one week they're brilliant and it's looking fantastic. And then, you know, we could play Norwich away and they're, you know, they're just nowhere near the same, like the same players. Yep, that's that's exactly right. And I think um that that goes into sort of what we've been talking about in the cohesiveness, you know, Um, the, the fact that we so were so disjointed and, and everyone, you know, doesn't seem to have a sort of structured plan when we have the ball. I mean, I don't know if that's lack of quality because we've got guys like Coutinho, Buendia um, who are talented footballers, but even then, when they're on the ball at times, it looks like they... It's just they, so stale. It was yeah. honestly, there was no movement for anyone. Like, yeah. I remember, I think, late in the second half, I think it might have been 1-1, Coutinho had the ball, and he was just, like, trying to tell people to move. No one was moving for him at all. Yeah. Like, no one was, like, it was just so, like, just such a stale, mate. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, when it got to, like, the 60th minute, I thought, oh, this has got a nil-nil written all over it. I didn't see either team scoring. No. Um, you know, unfortunately, we scored, and they had to equalise. But mm. Villa's no, number one like plan is to give it to Tyron Mings, take two steps to the left, hop it down the line, hope Watkins will run onto it because he's, he's pretty rapid. But yeah, unfortunately it's only worked once this season against Brighton that I can remember. I might be wrong, but yeah, it's only worked once this season. We have technically like such good players in the team mm-hmm. that can do so much with the football, like Coutinho, Buendia, McGinn on his mm-hmm. day can play an absolute beauty of a pass. And we're just not unleashing him. You know, like I think a lot needs to change and I think it will. That's it. You look at um, Palace and um, 
you know, Colin Gallagher, guys like that, like they were just running that game because, they were. you know, they've, they've had a pretty good year and they, they all seem to be on the same page and, you know, they're not superstars. They're like, we, we should be better than them in terms of, you know, our budget, our, our, you know, the size of the club and the, the, play, the players we have. Um, but, you know, they, they just sort of play a nice, simple style and they all look to be on the same page. And, 100%. Yeah, it's um, it's something that we, we really need to look at, especially, you know, in those midfield areas because, um, you know, Marvelous Nakamba, you know, he had some good weeks uh, when Gerard first came in. Looks really good. The injury uh, really hurt him, I reckon, though. Like, it's really hurt him. Yeah. Because he was a serious, like, Kante-esque player mm. under Gerard to start with. And I, I honestly, I, I think he's just like in the match fitness and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, hopefully we see a bit better of him next season because I actually like, I was really impressed with him, like yeah. uh, those three games or something. So yeah. And um, I think, you know, like it's his defensive um, effort and his work rate has never been in question. It's just his other side of the game. And I think in games like this, where we, um, you know, we're at home, we were against a team that, you know, we, we've got a good chance of beating. Um you know, that's where it really gets exposed that and I think also the the system as well, the players still don't have their head fully around it. Um Yeah. It takes time though. Like that mm. that, that honestly does take time. Like I mean we've seen it, we've had so many managers over the time where I I don't think until it took sorry, it took till last season for Villa to start playing with Gerard's oh, sorry, with Dean Smith's proper style. And we started seeing that properly in last season because he tried yeah. in the championship. He got more players in, didn't quite work in the first season in the Prem. Yeah. But then we really saw Dean Smith's proper football that we saw at Brentford and, and all that last season. So it can take time. Like you sort of make yeah. sure you get your players that understand, like especially your core players, understand what's going to happen and how it's going to be done every like week. No, totally. And I think that, um, you know, Stephen Gerrard's not going to accept um, mediocre performances. And like you said, I, I'd be, you know, there's rumors of us bringing in sort of six to eight players in the summer. It will happen. It will happen. Mm. It, will, it will happen. It will be kind of like not, like the first season because we didn't have a lot of players move on. You have to replace them. Yep. Um. So people are like, oh, Villa spend 150 million. Yeah, but we we sold seven players. Like, what? We're just not going to buy anyone. Like, sort of. It's going to be one of those sort of years again where exactly a lot of change, a lot of exciting time. Villa fans will love it because there'll be heaps of people coming in, and we love transfers as we uh we always have. But you know, hopefully, Jared gets them right. Like he needs to get him right. And I, th- I think the first one for me has to be if, if leads go down, go, got to get Calvin Phillips. Uh, yep. He's, he's number one for me who I'd get in. He's an absolute baller. And I, yeah, I'd love to see him in a Villa show. And it should have happened the season when he got promoted. We were very unlucky not to get him. That's it. He would be a good addition. And, um, you know, the others sort of being talked about in that area, are, uh, you know, Bubakar Kamara from Marseille. There's, um, you know, Basuma from Brighton is still probably on the wish list as well. And the and, Rangers guy as well. Yeah, Glenn Kamara. Yeah. Yep. He'll um so yeah, there's um there's definitely some potential to to improve the team and um I think we will. Um we'll keep going, we'll keep going. And um I just really uh yeah, I just really hope we can finish these last two games against Burnley and Man City well. Um give it a good crack. It'll be two good tests because they've, you know, they've got it all to play for both teams. So uh, hopefully we can, you know, have a good crack and, you know, if we could, you know, beat Burnley and maybe do something crazy on, on the last day, get a, I'm get a point. <laughs> a no, point. I got to beat them. We got to beat them. Do we? Yeah, they've, we have to win because they drew last night. So they had to draw one, lose one. So yeah, but they're four points, I think. And, and Liverpool have got, Southampton on Tuesday. I, I I thought they had to lose one and draw, like they couldn't get like they couldn't draw two games or something. I might be wrong. I haven't I haven't looked at, I don't look that high at the table very often because <laughs> yeah. uh, we've been up there for a while. But I'm telling you, Man City 93rd minute, Coutinho whipping in a finesse shot outside the box to win one nil. That would be that would be so good to see. It's written in the stars, isn't it, it Scotty? It's it's written in the stars. <laughs> I know, and like him and Gerard celebrating on the side. I know. Even though um the the Liverpool connection kind of annoys me sometimes, that would be fantastic to see because, I mean, you know, there is a part of me that wants uh Jack Grealish to do well because he was yeah, uh, it's, it's same with but, me, but 
<laughs> you know, not not in this situation, not when he's playing us. You know, I would love to see us, you know, take it off, take it off them, and um, it'd be yeah. absolutely scenes that the empty had. Um, oh on that day. god, it would em- <laughs> it would be empty in about five minutes after the final whistle. I think. Um, no, but uh, yeah, I, w- the game. I don't really want to say too much more. It was it was really painful to watch. I. You know, I had one one eye on it and one eye on the uh, the Man City West Ham game after a while. I was because... I was dozing off. I was yeah. dozing off. I will say one thing though. I thought the ref was actually pretty good, in my opinion. I actually did. I thought he wasn't too bad. Yeah. Like I thought that he let the game flow a bit. Um, didn't get sucked into one particular player. You know, mm. saying a bunch like refs can like, the refs can get sucked into that kind of stuff and like be like trigger card or like just be foul heavy. But I thought the ref actually. Like was spot on with his calls. Like the, the yellow card on Mings, yeah, stiff early in the game, but it was yellow yeah. card. Yeah, yeah, yellow card. Kind of yellow got one five minutes later, you know, evened it up. So I thought, as a like, normally we bag the refs every week. I actually thought he did a pretty good job. Yep, and um, yeah, we we should definitely highlight it when they do a good job because we definitely highlight it when <laughs> when, when, when we have a John Moss performance or Man, mainly Troy highlights them. He's not here, so I yeah. thought I'd do something a bit different. Yep. Um, Troy, I hope you're feeling much better. He's got a bit of pneumonia after the COVID. So he's uh he's been, not... to be fair, he was a warrior for coming on that last podcast because you guys didn't see he was he was coughing a lot beforehand. He he did like a great job to to get through that. No, he did, and it was great to have him back. And I'm sure he will be back again, hopefully, for the next game. So make sure you watch that one and uh like and subscribe. Um, yeah, so we'll uh We'll wrap it up there. No, uh, it's uh, you know, it was like I said, bit of a ball fest, bit of a bit of a late season game. Hopefully, we have a bit more urgency when we see them in Brisbane, because uh, <laughs> that's the kind of game it felt like, uh, some sort of preseason match or something. But um, no, um, looking forward to that. And um, yeah, there is a part of me that thinks, what if Leeds do get relegated? Is it going to be? Villa leads, or will it be Villa somebody else? I, uh, I've heard, I've heard if they go down, it's going to be a different team because of the fixture. Like, because they have to play in the championship mm. two weeks later, yeah. I don't think the EFL want them to be out of the country, like because no. COVID stuff, I think maybe. Right. Um, so it's going to be interesting. As much as I want Leeds to go down, I also don't want them to go down. Yeah, there's a part but... of me that's like, oh, maybe, maybe it'd be better if Burnley goes down. So, yeah, I, 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 I do like Burnley. I actually have a soft like, you know, they, they, they're such grafters of a team. You know, they're always like hanging in there. It's like stoked for all those years. You know, like yeah. Burnley just never get go, like never go down. Well, that's so it. Be... I mean, who would we say? Uh, oh, I wonder if he can do it on a wet Wednesday night. In it used to be Stoke. Now it's Burnley. If they go, it'll have to be, I don't know, Luton or, or someone that comes up. Yeah, so, to be fair, if Luton get promoted, like, fair play, I would love to see it. That would be scenes. Have you seen their ground? Yeah, I would go over to England to do it at a Luton away day because I'd love it. I think it'd be like, it's such a village thing. Like, we don't get that sort of experience here in like in Australia, like, compared no. to over there. Like, it's something so unique. And fair play to Luton, you know, I think that they, I saw a stat, stat of the week, not even Villa related, but mm. their squad was assembled with like 1.5 million pounds or something Yeah, during the playoffs. Like everyone else has spent like bucket loads of money and then there's this small odd Luton. So I think they've won all in the first league against Huddersfield. So come yeah. on the Terry, come, yeah, come on, come on Luton. And, but yeah, we got Nottingham Forest in there as well with Keenan. Yeah, so. There's actually a few Villa players actually playing, ex-Villa players, Snodgrass and Lansbury on um, Luton and then Jonathan yep. Hogg at Huddersfield, Connor Harahan at Sheffield. Is Ender Stevens still there? Maybe he might still be at Sheffield. I yeah. remember. And then obviously Keenan Davis at Forest and a Villa fan, Joe Lolly. Right. So, so it's, it's all, all around happening in the championship. And <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see who gets thrown. I mean, I, from, from a sentimental point of view, it'd be nice to see Forest because they are a big club and you know, they had success club. around the same time we did it with the European Cups in those early 80s and late 70s. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I probably would like them. But if not them, Luton would be kind of fun because I'd, uh, one of their one of their stands, it's like you walk through, you, there's like a door. It's the away stand. It's the away stand. Yeah, you walk yeah. through like, it's like someone's you go through someone's backyard. Yeah, yeah, it's such a weird thing. <laughs> That's why I would love it. Like, I think it's such a unique thing here. Mm. But yeah, but obviously I think my my prediction would be Forest, I think. I think yeah. well, I'd do it. Or even, to be fair, Huddersfield have done incredibly well because they were, projected to, to go down by a lot of people. So right. 
Well, I, I hope Forrest, and I hope Keenan does well because he deserves it. And yeah, I think, yeah, obviously back him in. That's it. All right. Well, we'll have to wait and see. So please, yep, like and subscribe, leave a comment, let us know how you felt the um, the match went um, and let us know if you enjoyed the 40th anniversary celebrations for the European Cup. I thought it was done quite well myself. So Loved it. Let, yeah, let us know. And um, yeah, we will see you for the next match. And it's Burnley at home. The, up the villa. Up the villa. See you. See you, mate. Catch you later. See you later.